Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making her way to the mic. They start dimming the lights. You start feeling alright. From Birmingham, home with the Teddy Longs and the Ruben Studders. More once you discover. For all of the lovers, Whitney Houston and Roman Reigns. For all of the lovers, and Mickey James and Marvin Gaye. For all of the lovers, and Sasha Banks, Janelle Monet, Silk, Sonic, and Paige. Allow me to say. Look, I just found a place we escape every one of us. I was kinda late, so I just made it off the struggle bus. Walking by the fate, cause I know it's right in front of us. Yo, I ain't with the hate, gotta focus on what's great. Ladies and gentlemen, Steph Hardy is on the air. Had to drop a couple bars just to make you all aware. So sit back, relax, enjoy the show. You know I go by Joe or the rest of the Hey y'all, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Hardy Wrestling Podcast Live Vibe on this Thursday evening. Thank you all for joining me wherever you're watching, whether it be Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you're watching. Thank you for enjoying the ride and for supporting the ride. Um, I am so happy to be here on this evening on a weekend of which a lot of stuff has happened in wrestling as well as, of course, you had the holiday and, of course, the Hardy Wrestling Podcast reaching 1,000 followers on Instagram and Twitter. So I'm really happy for that. So it's just an amazing time um, to be alive at this point. But of course, I am not alone. I am here with someone I had the pleasure of meeting when I was in Los Angeles for the Women of Color in Wrestling panel with Katrina from NCAT We Trust and Women's Wrestling Talk with me. She is a wrestler and her name is Jen Savani. She is known as the Devil in Disguise and the social hippie. So please welcome Jen Savani. How are you, Jen? Hi, first of all, thank you so much for having me. It's been a long time coming ever since I met you. So it's super exciting to finally be on here. I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. And I and it really is a long time coming because I've been basically trying to have everybody that I've met in over the course of the last couple of months um, in my last two trips to California on my show. So I'm finally I'm just so happy that this is finally happening. So before we, you know, get into all the other nitty gritty of how we met and stuff, what made you fall in love with wrestling? I always feel like this is a very tricky question because there's so many like reasons as to what made me fall in love. But initially it was just, to me, it's like theater. It's like a movie. It's an art. It's like a dance that we both do, you know? And to me, wrestling is beautiful. I think that what we do is so rare and it's so hard to pull off and it may look easy to somebody else, but to us, it's, it's difficult. And, um, I think that just the sport itself is really beautiful. And ever since I was a kid, just watching it, it was always so exciting and it always intrigued me. So I don't don't know. I don't know initially what made me fall in love with it, but just something about it, like I gravitated to it and I just couldn't get away from it. And ever since a child, it just, it stuck. That's a very beautiful way of putting it. Wrestling is an art. And I believe a lot of people sort of underestimate that because a lot of people try to think of it solely as a sport, which isn't completely wrong. Um, but at the same time, it's also an art because there's a movement to your body that almost reminds you of a dance. And then there's the storytelling component of all of the movements. And of course, the sort of the violence of it, but then also the movements of it that remind you of um, theater and story storytelling and narrative and it is um an art so I'm really glad that you put it that way even though you're not particularly sure like when it happened you know you just know that it happened and you look at it in a very holistic way and I think that's beautiful so when did you decide that you want to pursue it as a career yeah you're welcome um as a kid, I definitely was the odd one, and I'm sure every wrestler can relate where we've always thought we're going to be pro wrestlers while everybody else was saying they wanted to be doctors and nurses and firefighters. And we're just like, yeah, we're going to be pro wrestlers. 
um, thankfully, I made mine happen, and um, it's been crazy. It's been crazy ever since a kid, but I think that once I was 18, I think it solidified, like, the idea, like, that I do want to do it. And um, originally, when I was younger, I wanted to be into, I wanted to be an MMA fighter, but then that didn't work out, so I just decided to uh, fully commit to being a professional wrestler. Okay, so when you were 18, you basically decided that this was it for you, but then you tried another combat sport and it didn't work out. But something that I do find is is that whenever you do start off in, a, in one sport, it can be, you know, a little bit, it won't be so much of a shock when you do start wrestling. So mm -hmm. what was it like transi transitioning from MMA into wrestling, if you don't mind going into that? Well, I think that there's... a there's a lot that happened and it wasn't necessarily my choice as to why I didn't uh, fully pursue mixed martial arts. But the transition was pretty hard because I had to accept the fact that my first initial choice, well, not necessarily my first initial, but like the one thing that I first was committed to um, didn't work out. And it was very heartbreaking. But then I realized that there's a light at the end of the tunnel where there's another one of my passions. And um, when I did professional wrestling, it was almost like, it was natural for me where everything just kind of flowed and everything made sense and um not that I didn't with mixed martial arts but that was a whole different thing on its own but the transition was pretty was smoother than I thought it would be for sure okay because I know that the only like it's so funny you mentioned that because we are sort of living in this age where we're seeing so many MMA stars, you know, try to make the transition or certain boxing stars or whatever, try to make the transition into wrestling. And a lot of the times in interviews, they'll talk about, you know, how it right. is, it, it's not so much of a shock, but at the same time, it's not easy either. So I'm glad that you had a good, you know, transition into it to where it wasn't so much as a shock to you. Um, so as you began your career, did you face any obstacles and how did you overcome those, you know, once you were starting your training? Um very early on well i actually started there was a few obstacles that i had to face very early on um the pandemic was right around the corner when i first started so i started in january january of 2020 um and two months later the pandemic hit so that was one of the biggest obstacles i had to face was what happens now and what do we do and what am i supposed to do and like does this mean that there's going to be a complete halt in my journey or how am i going to continue it because one of my biggest things is that I, I was young. Well, I still am young, but like I wanted to keep it going. That was, I didn't want it to become stagnant at the time. So that was one of the biggest obstacles was trying to figure out what now. Um, aside from that, I also spoke about it in the panel. Um, having individuals in my life who didn't really agree that a woman should be in a combat sport. Those were the main two. And then also like, I think the, battle within myself of knowing that I was well worth it and good enough to be in it and you know that I can actually do it and knowing that you know if I put my heart into it I can do what I want and I can exceed and advance into what I wanted to do like that was one of the biggest battles I also faced was with myself yeah, I understand that because, of course, you have people in your life who you do want to share your evolution with, but then you tend to realize that you can't really tell everyone everything because they won't necessarily understand it as well or they won't embrace mm -hmm. it as much as you have. And I do understand that that can be hard. That's something that I've gone through myself. Um, and also, you know, you do have to do the inner work within you because there are some times where you'll try to do something and you just feel like, oh, my gosh, well, this is cool, you know, and I feel good doing it. But at the same time, am I worthy of this? You go to sort of second guessing yourself, which could open the door for self-sabotage in some cases as well. But you kept going. And I think, you know, that is to be commended because not a lot of people keep going after that because, you know, the biggest obstacle that you have to face a lot of the time is you and not so much as other people all of the time so you know right. I totally get that that is really understandable 
And this, and I, and I also just don't agree with the fact that, you know, there are people who really feel like women shouldn't participate in combat sports because I'm like, yo, like we have to defend ourselves too. Like, why is that such a bad thing? Like women can do whatever we want to do. Our bodies are strong and there are so many wonders that our bodies have. So why can't we do combat sports? You know, like we're not weak. Like we're really strong when you really think about it. We are. We are. And I think that we're coming into this new era where women are starting to prove people wrong and show that we are more than capable of doing what everybody else can. Absolutely. And we're owning that and we're owning, you know, the beauty of our bodies. And I think that's an amazing thing. And when it comes to combat sports, we've done, you know, a lot of great things. There's a lot of barriers that have been broken with that. And in wrestling, of course, you know, there there's been like an evolution of it, you know, continuously moving and evolving as the years have gone by, but it's definitely reached a high point now. And just the, um, the amazing amount of women that are making changes, you know, now as I'm getting older and becoming more aware of it, then more aware than I was when I was a kid, it's just like, it's empowering and it's awe-inspiring. Like it's amazing. And you're a part of that. And that's cool. Thank you. Mm, you're right. It is, it is amazing what we as women can achieve. It's insane, actually. Yeah, it really is. So who would, who is your first trainer and, you know, where exactly did you train and what was the best lesson that you learned, you know, as you were growing as a wrestler? Oh, okay. Um, my first trainer ever uh, was, well, I am from Santino Brothers in, um, Bell Gardens here in California. And my first trainer was Joey Chaos, um, Eli Everfly, and then Robbie Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of lessons that they, they give. Uh, one thing is, you know, how bad do you want it? Like how, how badly do you want it? And you have to earn it. Like you will not get anywhere without putting in the work. Uh, that's one of Santino's biggest slogans is put in the work. Um, and I know a lot of people do stand by that. And if you ever talk to anybody from Centino, they'll always say that the one main thing they learned is to put in the work. Yeah, that's amazing advice because I feel like in life, especially now, since, you know, everything is so readily available because of technology and everything just being like right there, you sort of want, you know, the evolution to not take as long. <laughs> So you're just nice. kind of like, when am I going to get this? Or when am I going to do this? Or when am I going to do this? Like, I want this now. That's something that I deal with a whole lot. But then you also have to understand that some of the greatest things in life co do come from the hard work and from the bumps in the road, you know, that teaches you, you know, all the lessons that you need to know. So that was really good advice that your teachers, you know, gave you and that you've sort of taken and into your career as it's blossomed. Like that's, you know, pretty solid advice. Yeah, it is. And, and I think that's a, a motto to live by, which I feel like a lot of people do. Yeah, you have to enjoy the journey, you know, and not, you know, focus so hard on the destination. True. Yeah, absolutely. That's very true. So, <laughs> yeah. So in the midst of you, you know, finding yourself as a wrestler and finding your identity, um, when did you, when did it all, you know, click for you in terms of the athleticism and, you know, who your, who your character, you know, who you wanted your character to be? And when did you like realize that this was it for you? Um, I feel like that's still something I'm figuring out. I do think I'm closer to the goal of realizing who I am. Um, but it all stems from little pieces of me that I wanted to exaggerate. Um, and I think that's really what we all do is we exaggerate who we are, um, inside. And I think that it stems from my career goals outside of wrestling and also like my interests and my hobbies outside of wrestling. And I think it's something that it's going to take a while for me to figure out. And I think that I could speak for a lot of people when we say that we'll still figure out who we're still trying to figure out who we are. And I think that'll come mm -hmm. with time. I don't think anybody ever like fully realizes who they are, but I think that um, I have a good idea. And I think that it's just me 
little bits and pieces of me exaggerated into one. Yeah, I hear that quite a lot. And that's really accurate. You know, a lot of what we see, whether it's on television or in the independence or whatever, is an extension of the person that you that that they are, you know, in real life. And, you know, I'm really glad that you're sort of taking your time with it and not trying to rush something that won't feel real. So, you know, at least you'll have time. And once you do find, you know, what it is or what it can be in the future, you know, it will be, you know, authentic and real to you. Yes, 100%. It will be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully I find it sooner rather than later. But like you said, there's no rush at all. Yeah. And in talking about, you know, the pieces of you and the parts of you that you enjoy in and outside of wrestling, what exactly do you do, you know, in your spare time when you're not um, getting your awesome wrestling career on? <laughs> well, I love coffee. So I constantly go with my husband on coffee dates. Um, and I love to read as well. Um, and I love playing video games. <laughs> But a lot of the times I study, because um, outside of wrestling, I am attempting to be a mortician. So I do study that a lot. And I study, you know, true crime. And um, a lot of the times my my off time is to resting my body and also uh, learning more about the career that I want to be in as well, aside from wrestling. Wow, that is really fascinating. Like you're also you're a wrestler and you're studying to be a mortician. Yes. That is that is pretty cool cuz you know that reminds me of Paul Bearer because he was like a real life mortician, you know, and a wrestling manager and he's from, you know, Alabama just like me. So mm -hmm. the idea that, you know, he was able he was doing that first before he got into wrestling is just like one of the most fascinating stories I had ever heard. And I actually worked in a cemetery office like a few years ago during the pandemic. Um, and we were sort of considered essential. So I really was going to work every day. But working in that office is like you learn a whole lot <laughs> no, <laughs> about yeah, how, yeah, about how, you know, things work with planning and, you know, the costliness of it and all of the above. So, yeah, you learn a whole lot about it that I never really thought about honestly so I think that's really fascinating that you're doing that along with your wrestling career maybe maybe you'll combine the two thank you yeah <laughs> I'm trying yeah that's to. really cool because, but I, I also I also found out about Paul as well so um that's also what kind of pushed me to be like if he could do it then I can do it 100 percent um because it is really they're two really difficult careers to like tackle at the same time but like I said if he could do it I could do it yeah, absolutely. And then you said you love coffee too. Like I love coffee as well. Like right now I'm currently going through a crisis because the Starbucks is close to my job is closed for renovations and it's been closed for like three I'm weeks sorry. and I'm sad. <laughs> like I'm really sad because, <laughs> oh my God, like that is my place and they know my order. So it's just kind of like, it being mm -hmm. closed, it's supposed to reopen like in, in about two more weeks, and I'm happy about that. But oh my god, I miss it so much. It's and heartbreaking. I've it is heartbreaking. Like Starbucks is amazing. It is, like, it is, but also like local coffee shops will surprise you too, where their coffee sometimes really hits. Yeah, maybe I should try that. Maybe I should actually get more into, you know, the local shops because we do we are opening a lot of a lot more local shops here in Birmingham. So maybe I should try those. But, you know, Starbucks, it was like first it was McDonald's and then it was Starbucks for me. So maybe at some point, you know, I'll transition into the actual local places. So since you go to Starbucks, like what's your order? Like what's your go to? My go-to. Hmm. Mm, your go-to order. I feel like I have like, I feel like I have like little phases of my go-to order. At the moment, I want to say it's a dirty chai with soy or mm -hmm. the chocolate cream cold brew. Oh, okay. That's pretty solid. Those are pretty solid choices. Mine is what the Venti. Yeah, mine is the Venti Ice Mocha with um seven sugars and whole milk with whipped cream. Oh perfect 
Yeah. I feel like you can never go so, with chocolate. I mean, you literally can. And then it's just like in the moments where you really need it, like in the morning, like it's perfect. <laughs> oh, yeah. 100%. 100%. I honestly don't know what I would do without caffeine. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's a problem. But at the same time, what are we going to do without it? But yeah, we just problem. Re- yeah, we just revealed a part of ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I can but, talk about coffee for hours. <laughs> yeah, um, it's great. But yeah, I think those are really fascinating parts about you, you know, outside of wrestling where your life is evolving in a way that you're balancing so many things, but yet you're being true to yourself. That's amazing. Um, and in the comments, I don't know if you saw, but your husband chimed in on YouTube <laughs> <laughs> saying that's my gorgeous that. wife. Shout out to Chris Nasty. Hi. Um, <laughs> he's so supportive. It's amazing. He is. He was also yeah. on the panel too. <laughs> yeah, I met him. He was so great. Like that was amazing. So, and then we ran into each other at WrestleMania. So, sure. yeah, yeah. So, wow. Okay. So, when it comes to um the state of professional wrestling, like how exactly do you feel about it, and what's good about it, and what do you think could be improved upon? Oh, I've never been asked this. I think I love how it's evolving when it comes to how diverse it is now. Uh, Compared to how it was now, we are in such a weird place with the wrestling where we see things that we never thought we'd see 10 years ago. Women wrestling men, women having bigger matches, women main eventing, uh, you know, women in like hardcore matches, you know, it's it's different and it's nice. And it's also nice to see that like women are getting more opportunities going to Japan, going to different places, Canada. It, it's nice and it's very satisfying and it makes it feel like we've done so much, even if it's the smallest amount, like we still contributed into the change that's happening now currently. And um, it's just, it's, it's such, like, it makes my heart warm seeing how, amazing wrestling is at the moment the only bad thing is that sometimes I feel like this is gonna be super controversial but we're allowing people who don't belong in wrestling back not that we're allowing it but there's certain people who are coming back into wrestling that don't deserve to be in wrestling anymore due to certain actions that they've done Mm -hmm. I think that they do a good job at noticing it but also you know I don't think they should have a platform to be back in the sport that they first, you know, did things in that made them leave in the first place. Um, another thing is, I feel like, oh, another thing that I really enjoy too is that the LGBTQ community is gaining such a big spotlight in wrestling as well. And it's really beautiful to see that we're so accepting of other individuals, whether they're non-binary, you know, whether they're female, male, transgender, it, it doesn't matter. Like, we all see each other as one equal person. We all bleed the same red. And I love that we're starting to recognize that rather than how it was before, where that was something that we viewed as negative. And it's, like I said, we're so accepting now, and it's nice because everybody has a place in the community. Yeah. Like, I 100% agree with a lot of that. Um, We have evolved in such a way where it's like where a lot of people's differences aren't necessarily being looked at as, you know, a negative. It's being, you know, celebrated as society is becoming more accepting as well. And I do believe that that's a beautiful part of wrestling. It's like we all belong and we're all fans, you know, at the end of the day. That's the way I see it. So since we're all fans, then everybody, you know, should be, you know, collectively together and we should just be accepting of each other and loving of each other because we all love this one thing so I am glad that that is happening and of course with the women and our evolution as well like it's getting you know better but at the same time you do have to be cognizant of people you know when they do come in that space and hopefully you know you try to believe that a lot of people are in the wrestling space for good Um, But you also have to be cognizant of those, you know, who might be in it, you know, and they might be a dark force. Um, And you have to know whether, you know, what your place is, um, whether it's to be a light force or a dark force. But then if you are seeing someone who's a dark force, you know, you do have to be powerful enough to speak out and talk about the things that are bothering you and the things that, 
you know, aren't the greatest so you can fight for what you love. And I think that that's something that is getting a lot better as well. Like we're speaking out on the things that don't make us as comfortable in order to evolve it and make wrestling better. So I am glad that you did speak to that. So, um, and in terms of the LGBT QIA plus community, I did see, you know, on your socials when I did follow you on social media that you do identify with that community. Yes, I do. I don't know. I, I love it because they have been super accepting of me and there's no judgment whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. It's wonderful. And of course, here on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast, we show love to everyone. Everyone is welcome to the table and everyone is welcome, you know, to be interviewed and talked to, you know, on here. I've had people on here of various um, sexualities and various um, colors, creeds and all of the above. So they've been good to me as well. And I'm just and I'm hoping that that just continues to go forth as this brand evolves and I'm happy that you have a community in that aspect. So yeah, it's a really, it's a really great thing to have where we're, where we have each other to lean on. So as you've evolved in your wrestling career, what would you say is, well, who would you say has been your toughest opponent? Hmm, Toughest opponent. I have so many. Um, I want to say definitely Sandra Moon. I loved wrestling her. I think she pushed me to my limits as well, as well as Viva Van. I wrestled her, um, I think, twice before. Always pushed me as well. Johnny Robbie is somebody uh, who I would love to run it back with, who also helped me a lot in my growth. And Bryn Thorne as well. There's a lot mm-hmm. of people, actually, but those are a few of the women who have pushed me to my limits and helped me grow as well. That's an amazing, you know, crop of women. And of course, you know, Viva Van, I've had the pleasure of having her on here on this show, as well as having me having met her at the same time I met you in L.A. You know, she's done so much in wrestling. And every time she, you know, does something cool or wins another title, I just feel so proud of her because I'm just like, oh, my God, look at you. You're doing it. I know. She's so good. (laughs) Yeah. And I found out about Johnny Robbie through WOW Superheroes and because on Women's Wrestling Talk, me and Katrina, as well as Emily May, we cover um, WOW Superheroes every Monday. So that's how I found out about her. But her name was Robbie Rocket on um, yeah. WOW. And just seeing, you know, how she works and everything. Like, actually, the first time we saw her, I believe it was in Los Angeles. And we had not yet seen her on television yet. So it was just like to see her, I was just like, oh, wow, here she is wrestling in singles match. And she is really good. Like, mm-hmm. she's amazing. So to find out, you know, more about her career outside of WOW, which is par for the course with WOW anyway, um, it's been really fascinating to grasp onto and hold onto and support them even more um, outside of the realms of that show. Um, and we do love that show. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, when you find out that these other women have careers outside, it's just like, whoa, OK, I see you. It's yeah. great. It's amazing. It and she is like everywhere. She is growing fast and she deserves it. She's one of the hardest workers I know, aside from the women that I also listed who work very, very hard. Like they're up there for a reason. Absolutely. I agree with that. And I'm just and I'm happy to, you know, watch their evolution, of course, through socials. And then, of course, you know, through videos and stuff like it's amazing to see, you know, how much more these women have to offer and to watch their growth. You know, even though you might be cashing it in the middle part, you know, they might be in like their final form if if you could call it that. And then you're just like, oh, man, I remember when I saw them here or there or wherever. And it's just amazing. It is. So who? Yeah, Sorry. and it makes me really happy because it's like they, these are individuals I know, and it's it's nice to see that they're they're doing the thing. Hmm. So, who would you say is your dream opponent, Jen? I have so many, so many. Oh, um, hmm. I have a lot, but I definitely, if I had to choose one, it would be Oscar. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> I I feel like 
she's definitely one of my, my inspirations from the moment I walk out the curtain, you know, how she does her little dance and gets into the rhythm of things. I always found inspiration from Asuka, especially if, if I had one person to choose, it would be Asuka for sure. That's a pretty insane choice. Like, oh my God, I remember the first time I saw Asuka, I couldn't, well, number one, I didn't know exactly who she was because I wasn't exactly as familiar with um, Japanese wrestling or Japanese women's wrestling for that matter. So when she came to NXT, that was the first time I saw her. And just seeing her run through everybody and be undefeated was just like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I had seen men be undefeated before, but in wrestling, but women doing it, that was just unheard of for me. So to see her go through and beat everybody and then win the title and hold it for so long to where she actually had to give it away <laughs> was just insane. Yeah. I was just like, oh my God, like she is really great. And even with what she's doing now, you know, it's um, she's the champion now and it's just like it's just her longevity is just out of this world and I do believe at some point you two could fight and it would be amazing like it would be sick <laughs> one day for sure but I agree with you like she brings something to some she was something different like uh when I first also saw her in NXT it was like wow like her style was so different to everybody else's so it was very unique to see and I think that's also what caught my attention was the fact that she had a very unique style and she had a very unique personality compared to the other woman nothing against the other woman but when you see somebody like us they're like whoa okay it was very new Mm -hmm. and she came with this aura of here I am you know like like, I really am the empress of tomorrow. Like, when she walks in a room, it's just like, you know, that's when stuff's getting real. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100%. 100%. She owns it. Yeah. Like, if she ever retires, I'll be really sad. But I'll understand. <laughs> on a human <laughs> level, I'll get it. But then on, the, on a selfish level, I'll be like, no. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but hopefully you'll wrestle her before she retires. <laughs> Yes, Manifest hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, you do want to name any more? You know, we do have time. Oh, definitely. Um, ooh, okay. When it comes to the independent scene, I definitely want to wrestle Trisha Dora. She's ooh, been yeah. everywhere in SoCal right now, so I definitely would like to wrestle her one on one. I love to wrestle Dark Sheik. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? There's so many. I always get so lost whenever I get asked this question because there's so many names that I can think of. Um, Masha Slamovich, for sure. Uh, I would love to have a death match with Charlie Evans. And Jay Vidal. Ooh. Also, yeah. Um, there's a few from the independents that I would like to wrestle. Like, maybe one day, Mike Bailey. Mm -hmm. There's so many. There's so many people. There's so many people. Like, wrestling is so, it's a big community. So, there's so many gym opponents. But at the moment, like, short term, I would really, really, really like to wrestle Trisha Dora. Yeah, Trisha Dora is fantastic. Like, I will never forget the first time I saw her wrestle live when I was calling the action for Black Girl Magic last mm -hmm. year. And she fought um, Karen Bam Bam in our main event. And I just couldn't believe any of what I had seen from the yeah. both of them, but definitely from her. I was just like, oh, my God, I was so honored to call that match because she's just both of those women were just so talented and just to see Trisha Dora on Ring of Honor doing her thing and yeah. as well as you know everywhere else doing her thing it's just so like I'm so proud of her and maybe one day I'll get her on the show but even if I don't you know we've met before so it's fine mm -hmm. um so even if I don't that's fine but if you know I just want to know more about her story because she's just she's so iconic and I really do hope you do fight her and Masha she she is just I've had her on my show before too um she is insane <laughs> she, she is she is such a hard hitter like oh my god like the stuff that she takes you know just kind of blows my mind in terms of her fighting style and then Jay oh my god Jay Vidal me and him have beef <laughs> 
<laughs> Why? Because the Trinity? <laughs> yes, because of Trinity. Okay, like, I love Trinity, and it's just, I love Trinity so much. And so when she came up, you know, and he started his mess with her and everything, you know, he was just like, I'm a fan of yours. Let's take a picture. And then he started bullying her, and I'm just like, uh-uh. And then when he started hitting <laughs> on her, it was just like, uh-uh. Like, I just, I was very sensitive about it. So I'm just like, no. But I am glad Trinity did beat him on impact yeah. i am i am glad she beat him but it it was just a miss i was just like uh-uh you you can't be doing my girl like that it was just too much <laughs> you gotta admit he's funny though he's comedy. yeah he is <laughs> he is Jerry. funny though he is funny though like he really believes it believes in everything he says he is and that's something that i do admire about him though and then when he shows his attitude and he goes to swing that ponytail like yep. that is everything <laughs> no, that's he everything gets in the ring. <laughs> yeah he's really great like he's great you know in terms of the barriers he's broken and then in ring he's really great too and then him and giselle together along with savannah yeah. evans it's just a match made in heaven like it just clicks so it, well it so does. it definitely mm -hmm. does and like that's the one thing i admire too is like seeing jay from vegas that you know like i've known jay before he got signed and like seeing him finally like achieve his goals and get signed like that's crazy it's so crazy and it's well deserved yeah i can tell it really is well deserved like i have been watching impact um i've been watching it off and on but hopefully i can watch it a little bit more you know the more i have free time um but impact just does amazing things with their knockouts division like it's they're like the main reason why i watch all the time is because of their knockout division their men's division is cool but their mm -hmm. knockout division is everything it is isn't it like masha jordan killer kelly like it's crazy and it gives yeah. a lot of women more opportunity as well Mm -hmm. And then you have Deanna, who's the champ now, too. Like, mm -hmm. you could just never go wrong with Deanna. She's such a great wrestler. Oh, she my is. God. It's insane. Yeah. And, like, just seeing what she's doing now, too, is crazy. Like, everybody in Impact is doing so well. Yeah, they really are. Like, I really wish Impact was on a, like, on a bigger, bigger platform where everybody can see how awesome they are. Like, I agree with that. Yeah, like on TV, in terms of television, I do like wish that they were just on a larger platform on a channel that would consistently show them and see the value in them because the stuff that they do is incredible, but I just feel like the audience isn't there due to the accessibility and they deserve better accessibility. They do. A hundred percent they do. Mm -hmm. Because it's such good TV to watch too. Yeah, it is, you know, and it's it's just a standout show in, in the midst of so much wrestling that is on every day. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what I was talking about compared to how it was like 10 years ago. You get wrestling every single day, even on Saturdays now. It's crazy. Yeah. And some Sundays. It's insane. Like, I never thought it would be like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what am I going to watch today? <laughs> Right. Like sometimes, you know, when you're doing content, it's great to have stuff to talk about, um, especially if it's varied. So you won't just talk about one company. You could talk about multiple. But right. sometimes you can get kind of overwhelmed and you just really need to just sit down and just lay down and just be like, yeah, no, just. <laughs> exactly. No and just chill out. Yeah, just chill out for a second and then jump back into it. <laughs> exactly. Have Absolutely. Days to relax and not worry about what's going on on TV. Mm hmm. Like it can be a lot, but you know, you just have to take care of yourself that way. And exactly. in, yeah. And in speaking of, you know, your career, and like we mentioned a couple of times in this interview, we did meet in Los Angeles at Los Angeles Comic Con for yeah. the Women of Color in Wrestling panel that was moderated by Katrina, who created it um, and conceived it and all of the above. And now it's just it's grown i'm so happy to see how it's grown from it being just an idea to it being a new york comic-con to los angeles comic-con and even recently at florida supercon with yeah. a whole other batch of women too and i'm just so proud of katrina because she's like my tag team partner because i was at the first one with her um and it's just an honor to be a part of that so how did she, you know, ask you to be a part of it? And how did you feel sharing your story on such a large platform like that? Um, 
I would like to thank Katrina because I never in a million years would have thought I would have done a panel on Comic Con. Like <laughs> it was crazy. Um, but actually, Ringside Rain was the one who um, messaged me in regards to the LA Comic Con uh, panel um, because uh, she believed that I was fit to talk about Hispanic women and their journeys. Um, and I really appreciate Rain for that. Um, it was crazy. I think that, I think that you can agree when it's just like, it gave me chills just being in front of like a large audience that was willing to listen to your story and listen to what you had to say and, you know, took what you said. And I remember, I don't know if you remember, but a young woman started crying because she said that, you know, it was very touching that all of our stories were so different yet you know like it all made sense and it, it all came together and i think that that in itself just opened my eyes to the fact that like we all basically inspire other people like whether you're a performer whether you're you know doing commentary like or having your own show it was crazy and and it's I'm super appreciative of that opportunity. And I think that's something that I always, I'll always have with me is just being able to connect with other individuals to that level because you can't always do that when you're out in the ring and wrestling. But being able to have like that moment with individuals where you could tell them that you, they can do it too and um, whatever barrier obstacle that they have, like they can definitely overcome was just nice. And being there just made it seem like everything that we all put into this is worth it because it means so much to other individuals and it shows them that we can do it, you know, despite our color, our race, our gender, sexuality, like we can do it. Yeah, absolutely. I do, you know, feel that 100%. And I do remember um, when she was crying and she came up to us and said um, how she felt um, listening to us tell our stories and stuff. And it's just you really just don't know or you really don't take it in, you know, as you're on the grind um, because you're just trying to get to the next thing and accomplish what you want to accomplish for yourself. But then a lot of the time you don't really realize that people are looking at you do this and they're taking something from it, whether it be good or whether it be bad. And you're hoping it is for the good most of the time and doing that panel um, and telling my story on both ends in New York and in LA really did um, do something for me in the sense that number one, I was honored that Katrina even asked me to do it. And number two, you know, having people listen to us and have questions to ask and just feel that there was a place for them. Um, I feel like, you know, that's like one of the biggest things that I just really feel is my mission. It's just to let people know that there is a place for you in wrestling and that it is safe to be here, whether you come from this place or that place or this background or that background, like there's a place for you. And I'm happy that we were able to share our stories and be real about our stories. Of course, you know, talk about the good and the bad, but at the same time, inspire others. And that's just a really great thing. And I'm glad that Rain um, messaged you about it and told you about it because yeah, like her story is pretty insane as well. Um, Cause I've had her on my show. I've had her on my show previously too. And her story is just absolutely nothing but inspiring, you know, and everybody's story is inspiring. So getting to listen to you, to your story, her story, Viva's and Kid Bandit's and TK's story and Rain's story, it's just amazing. And it gives me chills because I'm sitting next to these women and it's just like, whoa, <laughs> we're all, you know, shifting things in our cultures. And it's just a beautiful thing for all of us to be, you know, gathered together and listening to each other and inspiring others who might want to do what we're doing, but just doesn't, but don't necessarily feel like they can, but listening to us, they feel they can do it. And it's just, it was a beautiful experience, no doubt. And listening to your story really did inspire me um, in a lot of ways. And as a Hispanic woman, I love 
for, well, for you being an Hus a Hispanic woman, I'm more than sure that it hasn't been the easiest um, journey. So how do you feel about the evolution of Hispanic people or Hispanic women in wrestling? And what do you look to change as you evolve in it? I definitely think that it is evolving where we no longer have to fit the stereotype of, oh, she's Hispanic, so she's going to wear a mask and she's going to be a luchadora. And it's odd when you don't have a mask or you don't show like a Hispanic gimmick. And I feel like that's one of the biggest things that I've seen as well as like I mentioned in that panel, like the slurs. I think that we're way past the slurs now. And, um, but I hope to evolve is to show that other young girls can put their mind to it. I know that one of the biggest obstacles, I'm not going to speak for every Hispanic woman, but a lot of them come from a very old school family where a Hispanic woman is to be at home, you know, like I said, that having your typical career of being a stay at home wife. Um, and I think that I'm proof that you don't necessarily have to do that. You can do whatever you want to. And it may be hard and it may be difficult, but if you believe in yourself and if you can, and this, this isn't just Hispanic women, but like everybody in general, that if you believe in yourself and you believe that you can do something and if you want it that bad, I'm living proof that you can do it. Cause I've never believed in myself, not once. And I've always been super, I doubt myself pretty, pretty often. Um, and I'm doing it and I'm, I'm doing the thing. And, and I think that I want to be a example that, Hispanic women don't necessarily need to follow the guidelines of what what you have to do to be a Hispanic woman. You can be Hispanic and do what you want. And like I said, you could be an example. And I want to be that example to other little girls and other little boys as well that you can do whatever your heart desires. Absolutely. Like all of that really resonates and I feel it 100% because Something that I do love is seeing other forms of representation, you know, outside of my own, of course, as a Black woman. Um, anytime I see any other person of color succeeding in wrestling, it's like, I still feel, I feel a level of happiness, you know, that I would feel for my own people. It's just like, yes, they have that. Yes, there's this. And yes, this has been made for them. And the idea that you're a part of that, you know, makes me feel really good. And you know, we all doubt ourselves sometimes. Even I doubt myself. Like, I can't tell you, like, even this week, I've even doubted myself. Like, because sometimes when you're content creating, you look at numbers a lot and analytics a lot. And you're just sort of like, oh, my God, like, how come this isn't happening or this isn't happening? But sometimes you have to understand that what you're doing is bigger than, you know, the number and bigger than um, you messing up a move or bigger than this. And mm -hmm us being you know who we are and in this space is a lot bigger than all of the numbers that will tell you that you're not doing a certain thing or certain critics who you know come down really hard on wrestlers because i know there are a lot of critics and writers who do come down really hard on y'all and it's just like oh my god please relax they're human beings um <laughs> So it's just like sometimes you really do have to remind yourself and encourage yourself in knowing that, you know, even in wrestling or outside of wrestling, that what you're doing is bigger than, you know, any insult or any number that might say that you're not, you know, good enough. And of course, bigger than the voices in your side of yourself that are telling you that you can't do it. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm happy that, you know, Hispanic boys and girls, you know, get to see someone like you um, and see someone like um, so many other women of Hispanic descent, you know, doing their thing on a public level and they feel like they can do it, too. Like, that's pretty major stuff. It is a really nice feeling. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. <laughs> I mean, considering the fact that, like, that was one of my biggest like struggles is kind of like having to fight a parent and tell them like hey this is real and this is what I want and like um it isn't just a hobby it's something that I want to make a lifestyle and I'm not fully agreeing on beliefs and their old, old school mentality but yeah you said not agreeing with their old school mentality and what else um just basically them like not agreeing with it because they have a very old school mentality not being 100% supportive 
and uh basically feeling like you're doing this on your own without like support from your family members yeah it's a lot but you know you do have to believe in yourself and pick yourself up you know and just understand that you are enough and you know sometimes the biggest support systems can also can also be people who are your family but aren't necessarily related to you too exactly so so exactly. yeah <laughs> yeah and that's something that wrestling does give you a lot of it gives you a lot of family that you know may not share the same blood with you but they get you so oh exactly mm-hmm. you meet them they're literally in every state <laughs> yes <laughs> it's insane <laughs> everywhere you go it's like oh there you are <laughs> yes absolutely so when it comes to your career and your evolution um, would you say that one of your biggest goals is to be signed to a major wrestling promotion um that's mainstream and which one would you prefer it to be? Um, if you have a I, preference. I would love to be signed one day. Obviously, like I would love to do this full time. I don't have a preference. Um, because at the end of the day, like the goal ultimately is just to be happy doing what I love. And um whether I ever get signed or not, um I will know that I did it and I succeeded in doing it and um it makes me really really happy so I guess like to me the goal is to be signed but even if I'm not I'm just very blessed to be living the lifestyle that I do because not many can say that they're doing it and not many get experience how amazing this feels Absolutely. That's a good, that's a good attitude to have, but I'm more than sure with how talented you are, you know, and your arsenal that you have in the ring and just your spirit in general and just how fascinating you are. I believe you'll make it like seriously, like you'll make it and I'll see you and I'll just be like, Oh my God, I know her and it'll be cool. So (laughs) like, I love moments like that where I'm watching wrestling and then I see somebody that I met in either the Indies or working on a show or something, or just met offhand somewhere. And then all of a sudden I see them on television, whether it's an extra or something. And I'm just like, ah, you know, it's it's insane. Yeah. So so it's insane. So I'm more than sure you will definitely make it like you have the drive. Yeah, you have the drive and you have, you know, the spirit to do it. So I believe in you. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Of course. So who would you say are your top five wrestlers of all time that are male, female, or non-binary? Yeah. Okay. I want to say the first wrestler I ever laid my eyes on was Randy Orton. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely Randy Orton. Uh, China. I love mm-hmm. China, um, and I don't think she gets enough credit for the impact she made in this industry. China, Pete Dunne, I know it's an odd one, but Pete Dunne. Um, you know, this is very, very, very cheesy, but I want to say my husband, because, um, yeah, he's made my list. <laughs> and the last one I want to say is Asuka, for sure. Okay, that's a pretty solid top five there. And then I like that you threw in your husband. I mean, that's <laughs> definitely, that's valid. Okay, like we learn things from, from our significant <laughs> others. So that's valid. You know, you support each other and that's beautiful. You know, and Randy Orton, yeah, he's a modern day goat of our time. He is. And he was a legend killer. He, that was his peak. Not that he's not at his peak now, but that was like, that was when I was, so drawn to his character and his gimmick and what he was doing and I was like I want to be that bad (laughs) see he used to low-key scare me when he was a legend killer like because that was because that was right around the time that was still around the time where I wasn't sure what was real and what wasn't um so I was definitely yeah. like watching it, like really thinking that these people were mean. So around yeah. that time, I really thought he hated elderly people and was just going to go around destroying <laughs> them. Like I did not like that man. It was bad. <laughs> it was really bad. He was doing a good job at it too. I was also like, oh my goodness. Like, did he really just like punch people? Like really? Oh my God. I did. I was, I, it was so confused too. 
that was an insane journey. And you are right about China, though. Like, I feel like she gets credit here and there, but not as much credit as everyone else, you know, might get. So I completely get, you know, how you feel about her. Like, she was definitely larger than life. And she She does, you know, deserve a lot more credit. I would love to see her in the Hall of Fame on her own merit, honestly. Exactly. I was just about to say that, like, I don't understand why it hasn't happened yet. But, you know, like, I I do think that she deserves her own. Like, everybody, I feel like everybody has skeletons in the closet, but that doesn't make them less of a human being. So why not just put her (laughs) in already? Um, But we'll see, hopefully in the future, because she definitely deserves it. She deserves, I think she deserves more than just a Hall of Fame induction. Yeah, and then when I think about it, I just I just can't help but think about the visual of what it would have been like if she had lived to see herself get inducted into the Hall of oh. Fame with, with DX, and then yeah. to get inducted on her own. She would have had two Hall of Fame rings. Like, oh my God. Yeah. That would have been Whatever. sick. Absolutely sick. I mean, I'm just happy that she at least got the DX one, but that's just not enough. Yeah, she deserves her own. And hopefully one day she will get her own and a lot of more women will get inducted into the Hall of Fame as well. But she definitely deserves a lot of credit. So, yeah, I'm yeah, hopefully we'll see that soon. But I am glad that you did, you know, list your top five and that your husband was one of them. And it's a really solid top five. So. Hopefully at some point you will get to wrestle Asuka and then you will be on a higher platform. So what would you say the future holds for you, Jan? I don't know. <laughs> I think that the future is kind of scary. I'm one of those people who is a little afraid of the future. But like at the end of the day, I do feel like the future holds happiness and success and success <laughs> mm-hmm. and um, overall just peace and um I hope that the future lets me live my dream and I hope I work hard enough to be able to provide the life that I would like to have um but overall I really do think that the future holds a lot of peace and prosperity that's a very beautiful answer and a very nice way to end our interview. So Jen, thank you so much for coming on the Hardy Wrestling Podcast. And like we said, it's been a long time coming, but I'm so happy we were able to make this happen. And we had such a great conversation. And if you ever want to come back, you know, just let me know. Um, so tell everybody where they can find and follow you on social media and plug anything you've got going on right now. Um. They can find me at Jen Savani on all my social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, um, and Facebook. And then the only really thing is catch me at Hood Slam this Saturday at the Nile Theater in Arizona. Um, and the queen, queen of the underground, Agua, August 13th, and Full Queer, August 13th in San Francisco. Okay, lots of cool stuff going on out west. Um, you know, love it, love it, love it. Hopefully one day I'll get to go further, you know, west. Well, I can't say further west because there's California, but just the other western states because I haven't been to Nevada or Colorado or the other western states. So hopefully at some point I'll make it out there for a thing. Um, <laughs> that is amazing. So hopefully you can get out there and see a lot of good, like really cool promotions. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm I heard it's pretty cool out there. So maybe one day I'll make it. It'll it'll be fun. But thank you again for coming on the show. And of course, know that you can follow me, your girl Stephanie Hardy, on Instagram and Twitter at Queen Steph Hardy and follow the podcast, the Hardy Wrestling Podcast, on Instagram at Hardy Wrestling Podcast and on Twitter at Hardy Wrestle Pod. Um, and you can also follow me at Queen Steph Hardy on threads i i have a threads now so you can follow me there as well and just listen to the show on youtube of course the youtube channel like share and subscribe and give all kinds of nice comments and rate it with five stars because none of the other stars are going to work so give it five stars everywhere you listen to it um and just continue to support the brand so of course this has been the hardy wrestling podcast live vibe with your girl stephanie and jen savani the social hippie and until next time Bye, y'all.